Nobody walking in the door for the next five or six hours. Policies and priorities. October 18th. Yeah. It's interesting. Welcome to Policies and Priorities Committee. I see we have quorum, and I call this meeting to order. First order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, any comments towards the agenda? Councillor Junkin. Yes, Mr. Durley, uh, our uh, Deputy Mayor, I guess. Sorry. I'd like to uh, move that uh, 6.2 be uh, the first uh, item to be discussed, please. I think it would be 6.2 and 6.3. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, okay, yep, yeah, okay, yes, yeah, 6.2 uh, and 6.3. Okay, that's to perform a part. Any comments or questions? All the question, all in favor? Opposed, if any? Okay, it shall be moved up. Any other changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I'll call the question as amended. Uh, all in favor? Opposed, if any? That carries. And we go first of all to Moved by Councillor Kersey that the Policy and Priorities Committee recommend to Council that the multi-purpose community center business plan be received for information. Questions or comments? Councillor Kersey. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to congratulate staff on, on spending a great amount of time in, in working on this. It's a very deal. Pardon? We're not there yet. We're just we on 6.2, not 6.3. Oh, on the whole thing. Yeah, Sorry. Where are you, huh? Sorry. That's I'll okay. shut up. That's okay. <laughs> you went with a fine tooth comb again, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I, I like what you're saying. My yeah, apologies. Yeah, I, I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> staff. You know. Sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I, th I think it demonstrates uh, the capabilities of our staff and, and the creative thinking and, and all of that that goes into putting together a pro forma and it's a difficult process but I think they've done a, a, a yeoman's job there. Do I think every single line is perfect uh, and is it exactly the way I would have allocated it? No, but I don't think that's really the issue. I think the issue is that it demonstrates that there is some affordability within uh, the context of the, uh, the community center as we see it. The only th and the other thing that it points out quite clearly is that common area space does not generate money. So when you look at space like a 10,000 10, square foot foyer, uh, an 8,000 square foot second story foyer, you know, it's on and on and on, 17,212 square feet that is non-revenue generating. And, you know, you ask why the multi-use rooms don't generate money when you lump all of those common areas into that room. It's not going to generate m money from now until forever. So it points out that we need to massage the design. We need to scale down those non-productive, non producing areas, yes, still retain some functionality and still create some interesting space, but does it have to be just in that area, 17,212 square feet? I, I don't think so. So, you know, uh, when you couple this with the what's coming forward, uh, the next recommendation in 6.3, and we think of the, the pro forma in the broadest sense of the word, there's no point in arguing about individual items. I think we, we just look at what the general conclusions are. The general conclusions are we can do this on our own, we can run it on our own, we can be efficient on our own the way we operate it, and there are areas of the design that we have to look at to make us even more efficient. So uh, that's my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments? Councillor Riviere. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and I, uh, I echo uh, my colleagues' comments with regard to the quality of, of the report. It's excellent. I don't know whether um, this is the part, the point, the 
place to insert a further suggestion, but whether it's here or elsewhere, just want to, uh, to keep in mind that the, the picture here can be further enhanced with some revenue generating activities that haven't been mentioned here. For example, I know of a community center that makes a, a fair amount of, of revenue from uh, solar panels on its roof. I think that, that that was one that was given to us in some Counselor, detail. Perhaps, perhaps this can come up when we deal with 6.3 because right perhaps now all we're doing is, is receiving this for information. <coughs> 6.3 has some further recommendations and fair, I think, fair enough. think that's the place where it should be. Fair enough. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I, first, I want to apologize to Councillor uh, Kersey for my outburst earlier. Uh, I thought it would, right, would be Mr. about 6.3, but I do, I do want to echo those comments and certainly staff did a yeoman's work uh, or your woman's work as the case may be putting this uh, cases may be putting this together so um, kudos uh, to staff and I agree with uh, Councillor Kersey in terms of the assessment which I think is also in 6.3 but so I did want to say that thank you Mr. Chair any other comments or questions hearing none call the question and this being that the uh, Committee recommend to Council the multi purpose community center business plan be received for information. Okay, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. Now, the uh, meat of the matter. Moved by Councillor Junkin that the committee recommend that Council receive the issue summary report multi-purpose community center pro forma conclusions and recommendations and that the reason cited therein committee recommend that Council confirm that the capital cost for new community center not to exceed 30 million and that Council direct staff to proceed with a community center design that is solely operated by the town with a per annum tax subsidy not to exceed 200,000 per year and that council directs staff to report back to council once the construction manager, the architect and staff have accomplished a community center design with capital costs no more than 30 million and operating subsidy will not exceed $200,000. Now we can do some fine tuning to that if we wish and it's open to the floor for questions or comments. Councilor Riviak. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and thanks for your direction earlier with respect to the appropriate place to make mention of, of any, any revenue production. I have a couple of comments to make, and let me start with that one since that, that's the one that I, that I began with and thought belonged elsewhere. But um, I think the, the 30 million and the 200,000 does represent a package that gives us a target and is probably a, a target that, that we can work toward that would that may w very well be doable and I think that the sooner we put a number on this project the sooner we can get some real hard work done and moving toward it. It is our intention of course to be as effective and efficient as possible and reduce those costs uh, it, where, where, where possible and how possible. With re and the point I was making earlier was with regard to other revenue producing opportunities that have not, have not yet been addressed in this report and somewhere along the piece we hopefully somebody will do some creative thinking around where those might come from. For example, the example I was citing earlier, the use of solar panels on a roof, which in, at least in one institution provided a fair amount of revenue above and beyond uh, what was there. The other comment I want to make, though, is, is with regard to uh, what I picked up, uh, perhaps in my, my own paranoia, to be kind of the direction of the report that suggested that as we go down the piece and fine-tune the design that's been put forward, as, as, as we must because, of course, the capital cost of that is much too great, that somehow there be a connection made between the multi-purpose area and the opportunity to, to reduce the size. Um, this, this is something that I would find very difficult to accept as we go down the road. I think that uh, it's too easy to make the argument that, that at least in the pro forma, as indicated, the uh, uh, the, the operating cost uh, with multi with with a multi-use area somehow is doubled over the operating cost of just the the uh, recreational physically recreational parts of it. 
or that the, uh, the, the capital cost can be reduced by chopping out the square footage represented by multi-use. I think that uh, if we were building, if we were contemplating building a single element structure, like a single pool or a single arena or a single gym, it, it makes sense that the community accept that and, and kind of put a shoulder to the wheel and, and, and pay for that. But since we're designing and building a multifaceted community center and we're asking all aspects of the community to support it, both in terms of capital and in terms of operating, that as this is redesigned to meet uh, fiscal goals, that the thing be considered holistically, that, that redesign uh, should occur across the whole board, uh, that whatever efficiencies can be found should be found across the whole board, and that uh, at the end of the day, whatever we have is something that meets the needs of the broadest number of people within the community, including those who, uh, who, who, who ne don't necessarily attend to arenas and gyms or, or, or physical fitness opportunities. There's there are performing arts and visual arts, other arts that people are interested in and looking for a place to do. We are going to, after all, ask those same people to pay for this thing. So we ought to keep that into consideration. So I like the, three, the, uh, the 30 million, I like the 200,000 as, uh, as goals to achieve. And as we work toward that, I just want people to understand that I certainly will be looking askance at any suggestion that we can get to those numbers or less if we just chop out that part of it. So just wanted people to know that, and that's a caveat that I would put on my, on my support of, uh, of this motion. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chair. Other questions or comments? Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would echo uh, Councillor Rubiak's uh, comments. Uh, that's why I, in the earlier item I mentioned the fact that uh, vacant space or common space doesn't generate funds. Mm -hmm. Real space does. So I would hope that we don't take an axe and just chop it all out. And I, I don't think that motion says that. No. I think the motion directs staff in a fairly broad uh, format and and I would think that they're going to our, our uh, construction uh, manager is going to take a holistic view at this and our staff will take a holistic view and and try and come up with the most efficient uh, uh, community center uh, that we can achieve within the budgetary constraints that we find ourselves so I'm going to trust our staff and and uh, our community ma our construction manager and our architect to do that the only other thing mr. chair that I like that I was going to sit back but change my mind, <laughs> is we have worked with a great number of volunteers to get us to this piece. I think, you, and I'm, I, you know the, how I feel about communication. I think it would be useful to have an information meeting with ADAC at this point and fill them in on where, this, where we've been and where we're going and why we've taken this, the measures that we have. It's not negating all the work that they've done. Uh, they've given us a, a, a good direction. So I really believe that we need to have a, a meeting with ADAC uh, where this can all be explained by staff and, and the process, how we went through the how might we's and all of these sort of things and where we're going and, and what we hope to achieve from it. So I would like to see that either as a referral to staff or a direction to staff and not necessarily cloud the motion with that, but if it could be a direction, Mr. Chair, I th I'd be quite happy with that. Okay, I would like to ask uh, perhaps the CAO for a comment on that and then perhaps the Director for, of Recreation, uh, certainly a communication to that committee I feel is in order. I'm just wondering if a staff report could be forwarded to them or or some communication that, uh, Mr. CAO, if, if you will, or if you wanted to pass that on to... Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that uh, uh, the suggestion is a good one. Uh, we have a pretty good staff report here that we can uh, send to ADAC along with the performa and the how might we information, including uh, most importantly the challenge mapping that council did. So, uh, a lot and, and uh, combine that with the report on the construction manager. So, all of that information can be sent off to ADAC. Uh, if ADAC would like to have a meeting, uh, I'm sure staff would be more than pre uh, willing to be present and to make a presentation. Okay, so the first step would be to share this information with them, and if, in fact, a follow-up meeting is necessary, that, that can be arranged. that satisfy you, Councillor? I'm Christina? satisfied with that, Mr. Okay. Chair. And we'll take that as staff direction, then? Or direction to staff to go forward with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, you had comments? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I appreciate, again, what, what colleagues have said, uh, and I just want to build on, on some of that. I think the the great work of the uh, ADAC committee and staff in terms of and the architect in terms of the design um, 
they really took the recommendations that we gave to them based on the leisure plan report and moved it to the next level um, and added what some have called around this table the hopes and dreams sort of design mm -hmm. um, and you know why why not sort of sort of design on, on things I think and council listened and added those in and then said to be prudent let's check the cost before we proceed anymore and I think there was a spirited discussion in, in July and my colleague and I were opposite ends of that but but I think it's worked out for the best that we said let's check out the cost of this thing before we spend any further dollars I think was the quote from the councillor uh, uh, Kersey and and get to the design so we now know that figure we knew it in the summer as a class D estimate uh, and we now know based on the pro forma that we just received how much that would cost to operate both essentially I'll put in quotes unaffordable the recommendations that's coming to us now is saying what is our affordability cap and again we're not going to micromanage we're not going to split those hairs but we're going to say look here's our affordability cap go design to that affordability cap not just of the design elements but the affordability piece and so I am supportive of this and I think it's worked in other situations um, we think about fire station number three uh, although and then new information came up we had to add to that but we're looking at Maple Acre library again it was a there's a hard cap on that uh, on that amount um, I think the question that's important for the community in terms of this is questions are will it have the things that I want to participate in and go to and all of that and can I afford it mm -hmm. and I think this motion deals with both of those because it's going to be redesigning, tweaking, fine-tuning. Um, I also see this, Mr. Chair, as the worst case scenario in terms of the amount um, and in terms of the the amount that's required necessarily for, I'll say, new money in the sense. Um, there is uh, the sale of lands, for example, in East Fawn Hill that's not considered in this that I would consider to say, let's knock that off this total price tag cap of the 30, not added on, but taken off. So then that uh, impact on our community would be lessened. The fundraising is not in this as well, and I would presume that now we're going out and doing that um, assessment for fundraising, the case for support. Is that a couple million, three million, four million, whatever that is from that case, and we'll hear when that comes, that again would be taken off of that hard cap of, of the 30 million for capital. And I do want to underscore and maybe just ask a question quickly, Mr. Chair, uh, on two items. One, on the space piece that Councillor Ribiak indicated, there's, there's two number 11s here. Uh, the first number 11 says that multipurpose and common area space required additional design elements to make them sustainable um, and to accomplish this, the construction manager, architect, town staff work to provide alternative design operating recommendation. It leads one who might be paranoid, as the councillor indicated, or not, it leads one to believe under that first number 11 that it's only those multi-purpose and common area spaces that would be redesigned. And I just want the overt assurance whether that's the case or not the case. Can we hear from staff on that? Uh, Mr. CAO. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in response to the question in general, of course, uh, uh, the construction manager and the town staff will be working with the architect to take a holistic view of the, the design as it sits today to find uh, efficiencies. That's in everyone's best interest. With relation to the multi-purpose space, as indicated in point 10, uh, our performa is showing a utilization rate of 36% and it's really no different than any other uh, exercise we've gone through, i.e. Uh, we show a utilization rate for the rinks at 75% prime time for the second pad. You had to hit that to make it justified. Uh, we did that in a similar fashion with hotel study. You had to have a certain amount of 
um, a percentage of um, accommodations per night uh, or it wasn't feasible. So we're looking at the multi-purpose space in the same way and consistency that we've looked in the looked at other projects. Um, to suggest that it's simply focused on the multi-purpose space, cut it out and we're fine is not the approach. But I want to be very clear with Council that a utilization rate of 36% and a capital cost to build a facility uh, that we have no hope of generating revenue on is not practical nor will it be recommended by administration. Uh, we will look at the building in its in its entirety, uh, a priority to, not a priority, but an equal opportunity for arts and culture and non-athletic sports is obviously important to the facility, but um, we will be making recommendations back to Council based on what's in the best interest of the, uh, the entire community. Uh, and if Council approves this in relation to the capital cap and to the operating uh, subsidy cap. Uh, those will be the two targets that we're working for um, uh, with respect to the design has been, has, has been uh, approved by Council to, to date. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that response from, from staff. So yes, sir, no. um, maybe not to put too fine of a point on it, but is it proposed that the design would be that similar kind of 75% utilization rate? Is that the target that you're trying to to hit? Or, uh, Go ahead. Through, through yeah. Mr. Chair, yes, we're trying to hit some level of sustainability. Okay. Um, but fine. having said that, I mean, again, we're not looking at, I wouldn't say we're looking at a 75% utilization rate in a multipurpose space because I don't think we could predict that accurately. That's something you can do by selling ice. What we are saying, though, is if you take the 36% utilization rate we're currently showing, that has an impact across the board. It drags everything else down with it. So what we're trying to do is develop a facility with the $200,000 operating subsidy as a cap, everything in. Mm -hmm. So if three out of five make money and the other two don't, but we can still deliver it within that subsidy, then great, we'll do that. Okay. Um, and that's an important note to make. Um, the operating subsidy, again, we're looking at a 0.5 to 1% increase in taxation, which is not, um, is, is, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't think that that's um, a burden on, on the taxpayer. I think that's within a reasonable realm of expectation for a building of this scope. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And, and I, I, I certainly appreciate those uh, clarifying points. Um, and I think really the next point is, the next is to get going right uh, because right now it's sort of hypothetical up in the air um, and so in terms of the the next steps or timing uh, certainly uh, agree with Councillor Kersey's uh, recommendation in terms of getting the ADAC back together informing them about this etc um, do we have any any idea in terms of the timing or can you come back to council at our next meeting in terms of after meeting with the uh, architect or sorry the construction manager I'm pointing to the treasurer because she answered all those questions earlier but um, can we get some information in terms of the timing when can we s expect to have something back etc I think the course of action that we've already given direction on mr. mayor is the fact that we're now going to communicate with ADAC and it all depends on their reaction uh, mr. <laughs> CAO, are you uh, well, I'm not sure it depends on their reaction I think um, I, I, the, the, the next step that. the next step I mean is is uh, talk is informing them certainly yeah and after that it, it's up if they want to have a meeting with that then it then it comes forward but mr. CAO thank you mr. Ren. I think that uh, uh, if I'm understanding the question right it's a timeline on regards to getting yeah. back Coming started back because us. I believe we've been on a two-week break since sometime in June with regards to the design, so we're all anxious and eager. We want to get the construction manager on board, which uh, we now have clarity on. I'm expecting to meet with um, the architects uh, with uh, no later than two weeks from today, ideally even by the end of this week uh, or early next week to get the in introductory meeting back, uh, or uh, introductory meeting rather, uh, going. Um, and time for us to interview with the uh, construction manager as indicated earlier as well as briefing them on our objectives uh, restarting uh, the design with Petrov and moving forward I suspect that this phase will go fairly quickly we've got good bones 
um, the last meeting we had with Petrov, we were starting to you know explore elevations and those sorts of issues. So uh, I'm not expecting a long period of time until we're coming back to council with some preliminary elevations that will move the project's design to the next level. Great. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments? No, uh, just Gosser one. Uh, first of all, I'll have to uh, everyone's indulgence because I do have to get out of here. I haven't done my duty yet. So, but before I go, I would like to just say, uh, number one, I'm glad to see that uh, the uh, community center is, uh, as everyone here is, uh, happy that we're getting down to a, a realistic figure, or at least a figure that's in the ballpark. I'm, I'm quite anxious to see uh, how uh, ball construction is going to knock $24 million off of this uh, and still stay <laughs> within uh, and have this look like it's the community center that's on the table now. I, I don't think it's going to be done, but all the more power to them. Uh, and, and I'd like to comment on, 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 um, Council, on Mayor Dave's comment that yes, when we, if we do sell that land, I hope everyone realizes, I uh, hope everyone agrees that that should come off the 30 million and bring it down to 20 because I still remember uh, when we had that one meeting that uh, uh, the Treasurer Kerry Pupo said that 30 million was going to be a 10 or 12 percent tax hike. So I know 30 is a lot better than 54, but I still think you got to do a little bit better than that. And excuse me, I have to run. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Other questions or comments? Conservative. No, we still have quorum, so we'll continue with the business. <laughs> Maybe somebody else should leave too. <laughs> yes, the ticket duty. Yes. Right. What, time, what time is that? Oh, yes. What time are the polls? 9.30. 930. Oh, 930. We've got half an hour to vote. So. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> Oh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed of any? Carried. His, his duty is not biological. Is no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll move now to 6.1. Moved by Councillor King that the Policy and Priorities Committee recommend that Council approve the Celebrate Success Individual and Departmental Policy. Questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Uh, just uh, kudos again to, to staff for putting this together. We heard the uh, Celebrating Success presentation, so thanks very much for their tremendous work on this. Um, there, just a quick question. There was a comment at some point in that, when that group presented that they, some of the staff indicated that they didn't necessarily think that the watch at 25 and the whatever at so many years was was effective I didn't see anything in that in this policy for that I'm hoping that we're not changing that mr. CAO any comment on that uh, thank you mr. Ring. no we're not changing that uh, I think you. the message from the committee was that it is the only thing that currently exists so uh, that is an important sort of traditional more ceremonial presentation uh, this deals with more of the day-to-day -day leading up to that type of acknowledgement. That's great. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments? Oh, one other um, nominees. If a member of the community or a number five uh, member of the community or council would like to nominate somebody, they should do so through who? Through the CAO or the director, that kind of thing? Is that correct? Uh, it could be through that. Ultimately, the uh, nominations end up with our director of uh, human resources, uh, Ms. Gilbert. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a question on it. If something comes to the attention of one of the council members, again, we would send it through to Paula as well. I believe that would be the appropriate. Uh, thank you. Okay. Other, other questions or comments? Seeing none, I call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. Uh, uh, down to 6.4, I believe. Mm -hmm. Moved by Councillor Junkin. It has to be moved by somebody else now because he's not here. Mr. Mayor. Moved by Mayor Augustine that the Policies and Priorities Committee receive issue summary report, winter operations policy, and the committee recommends Council adopt the winter operations policy. Questions or comments? Councillor Rebecca. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have one just minor wordsmithing. Now, I know that wordsmithing is probably 
not thing we ought to be doing, but in the solution statement, currently reads that the Department of Public Works and Utilities shall maintain a comprehensive winter operations plan that allows the town to provide solid documentation that winter response activities are planned, <laughs> instituted, obeyed, and monitored. I just found the word obeyed was a little, little rash. I think what we're talking about is, is compliant with standards or uh, uh, something, but obeyed sounds, I don't know. I'll ask the director uh, for, uh, for an opinion on that or perhaps a clarification. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I feel it's exactly that. The thinking was it's a compliance-based uh, policy. That's really where the root of it comes from. We'd be happy to swap out words if you have another suggestion. Okay, perhaps we can see that when it comes through to the council at, uh, at the next meeting. Sure. Okay, doors sure. missed. Okay, did that work? It, it, it works. If, if you meant compliance, use compliance. Mm -hmm. If it's a compliant, it makes perfect sense to me and, and, and it fits. That was the only comment I had. Go ahead. We most certainly can change that out. That okay, that we'll look forward to that when it comes forward to council. That's terrific. Other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chair. Just in terms of one of the reasons we sent it back was for to include, make sure that we included sidewalks and trails and and those kind of things. Some of that's um, some of that's in the problem or it's in the background. It's sort of in the how might we, but I didn't see it in the solution statement. And I d so again, in the, in the how might we, it talks about properties and sidewalks in winter months, but it only says uh, to provide safe driving conditions and ensure safe passage of emergency vehicles and school buses. I thought it was so that people can also walk on the sidewalks. Um, so that's the first point. The second point is in again in the solution of solution statement, maybe it would be there, maybe it's sort of there because you don't say roads, but I, I guess the problem I had was in the first piece, the how might we, I don't know if we have a comment from the director on director, that. Director, can you comment on that? Thank you, Mr. Chair, I, I can. The solution statement is committing, the, in, in what I was trying to say is it's committing us to the plan, and the plan is what has the um, details on how we would maintain roads and sidewalks. So uh, <coughs> sidewalks are recognized through the facts, the, those that was enhanced as you had requested, mm -hmm. um, but the commitment in the solution statement doesn't get down to the specifics of what uh, infrastructure we're talking about. The, the details of that are in the plan. Okay. Would it make sense to put, it says here, uh, just in the how might we, would it make sense to put in an effort to, like halfway through, in an effort to provide safe driving conditions and to ensure safe passage, passage of emergency vehicles and school buses? Can we not say and pedestrians? That's all I'm just saying just to make sure that it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, uh, yep. yes, we okay. can add it into the how might we statement. I, I th it definitely is the policy that we clean the sidewalks, so that makes perfect sense. If, if that wordsmithing can be done when it comes forward to council as well, that would work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that work? It uh, works for me. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. And finally, moved by Councillor Kersey that this regular meeting of Policy and Priorities Committee be adjourned until the next regular committee of the whole scheduled for Monday, November 2nd, 2015, unless sooner called by the Mayor. Questions or comments? Call the question. You run a good meeting, Mr. Chair. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed, if any? That carries. Great. 6 2 Blue Jays. All right. They've been lacking that, haven't they? Yeah. Big time. That's their muscle. They're batters. They're, 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 they're batters. Yeah. They've been wow. Fortunately, that could be a good day all the way around. Yeah. <laughs> Home run in uh, Kansas City Park. Yeah. Ball there too. I'm told. <laughs> yeah, they have the seventh, ghost. Seventh inning, the, inning meltdown. The ghost speaking to people, right? <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Good job. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Oh.
Okay, I'm sure I'll cut all that out. But you know, squeeze your balls again. This one? 